around. So I just bought this toolbox for the back of the Subaru. I was thinking about doing like a drawer system or something like that. But I just wanted something that I could take out whenever I wanted to and something a bit lighter. And all the drawer systems I've seen are very expensive and usually quite heavy. So I went with this toolbox. It's this like, I think it's aluminium or galvanized steel. But um, whatever it is, it's very light, it only weighs about 5.5 kilos. So it's pretty light. Um, usually when I go for like a camping trip or something, I usually put like a laundry basket back here or like a big plastic container. And I find everything bounces around. Uh, so I wanted something a bit more secure. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bolt this container to the floor here. It should make it pretty secure. It has a pretty good lock here actually clicks closed so you don't have to have a padlock on it to keep it down. I've noticed with a couple of the, the other cheap ones you had to have a padlock in it to stop it rattling. It did have a chain that held it up there but I cut that off. I don't need it. It's just no point and this, it was just too rattly. Also took the handles off. Um, another thing I just found they were just rattling in the car um, and I took a little badge off here just to get rid of it. So in the video I'm just going to show you how I'm going to bolt it to the car. Once it's bolted on it's going to be pretty good so I can have it go up and down as well so yeah I'll just drill some holes through the bottom of the toolbox and then through the bottom of the wood and just bolt it on and I'll show you that once I get back <laughs> Okay, so we got all the holes drilled now. Just to deburr them, I like to use a step bit. Hey everyone, so just going to be working on the car again today. Uh, just doing bits and pieces all over the car. So one of the things I need to do is uh, put in this new uh, drive shaft for the driver's side. The one I have in there at the moment is a aftermarket one. It was a pretty cheap one. It's only been in there for about two years and it's already started to click. Could probably keep going with it, but it's starting to give me a bit of grief on the highway, a bit of wobbles and stuff like that. So we're just going to throw in a new one. Uh, this cost me $350, so it's pretty expensive, but hopefully it should last a while. So we'll do that today. I also wanted to do uh, a little thing on the toolbox. So I've noticed after a couple days of using it, the edges here are pretty sharp. So I just got a bit of pinch weld, so we'll put that around there. But what we'll start off with is um, getting that new CV shaft in. All right, so I just got all the tools I need to take off the tire, take off the CV. Um, so I've got the jack there already, I've got a jack stand. Alright, so the first thing I need to do is just disconnect the sway bar. Just makes it a bit easier to push down the lower control arm. I definitely recommend that you disconnect the sway bar length when the car's flat on the ground, it makes it so much easier. So all we gotta do is just take the wheel off now. So we'll just jack up the car now. This is a little cheat I do, it's probably not recommended. Okay, so we'll just take off the wheel and then we'll lower it down on the jack stand. Okay. 
So yeah, so what we need to do is undo this 32 mil socket. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna stick a screwdriver in here. So we'll just stick something in here just to not let it turn. There we go. Okay, so the axle nut's all loose now. So now what we need to do is to come under here and we just gotta undo this ball joint at the bottom. So we're just gonna take out this pin. Keep in mind, this isn't really a how-to. I just wanted to show you what I was doing today. Just to disconnect these, they say to hammer it, but I find if you just lean down, put it up against the pin, and just pop it down. All right, so we're just gonna disconnect the ball joint from the lower control arm, just lift it out. Now that's lifted, we should be able to get the CV shaft out from this side. So that's it all out. Show you quickly. That's it lifted out. All right, so what we need to do is get it out of the transmission. Two. Pop it out. Hopefully this doesn't ruin my day. Oh. Nearly broke my face. There we go, we got it out. That's the axle there. One of these ends is messed up. It could be this, it's pretty, doesn't sound very good. Keep this as a spare and on any long trips we'll take that. So now we'll go back to the car and install this one. There we go, so we're back at the car ready to install this. I've never actually changed one of these but I'm pretty surprised how easy it was to get out. I thought it'd be a bit longer. The dealership that sold me this said it would cost 160 to install it. Probably pretty reasonable, saves me, what, two hours to do it, once I pack up all the tools and everything. Uh, so it wasn't too, it was pretty tempting to get them to do it, but I figured I would do it today, as I had the day off. So we'll just insert the new shaft into the transmission. Okay, so we've got the drive shaft here. We're just gonna lift up the hub, try to get it in. Okay, so the nut kind of fits. Just gonna tighten that up to see if they'll pull the shaft in. There we go, so that's pulling the shaft into position. So we've got a little bit more to do, so, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to get this ball joint down the bottom back in. So now we'll put the new, new pin through. So that's through. Okay, so we're just gonna tighten up this nut all the way. And that's with the 32 mil socket. See if it fits. Okay, so we fit. We need something to stop it spinning. So we'll put the screwdriver back in. Okay, so that's fully tightened. Now we just need to hammer this down again. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hammer this once the wheel's back on. All right, so we'll put the tire back on now. Put the lug nuts back in. So now we'll lower the car down. So again, we'll tighten this up to the correct torque spec. So now all we need to redo is connect the end link back to the lower control arm. Hopefully it's not a pain in the ass, but we will try. There we go, the CV is all in and all done. All I need to do is just take it for a test drive and recheck 
the axle nut. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to do today was just add some pinch weld to this edge here, just to make it a bit less sharp when putting things in and out of the box. So yeah, so I got some pinch weld, it only cost about $12, and we'll throw this in. So we'll just start probably around here. pretty happy with that. One other thing I wanted to do was actually add some pinch weld on the bottom of this. I just wanted to do this as I put it in the back here, sometimes tied to the, the floor, and this sharp edge here, I've noticed it's starting to wear the carpet, and I also put this sometimes on the roof rack and tie it down. I've noticed the edge here is chipping away the paint on top, so don't have to worry about it chipping any more paint. Perfect. Okay, so I have a little bit of pinch weld left over and I figured to neaten up this edge I have here just from when I took out the speaker, I figured I'd add the last little bit to just that. There we go guys, so it's all on. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.